So in this video, I explain what is a distribution function, and I show some of the properties of distribution functions. A distribution function is a function of a real number that tells us how the probabilities of a random variable relate to that real number. In particular, the distribution function is defined to be the probability that the random variable x takes on a value less than this number here, x. And because, remember, a random variable is a function into the real numbers, this equality here sort of makes sense. And so we can think of this as our definition for a distribution function. This has got to be defined for the entire real line because this random variable, well, we don't really know what it is before we start describing it. This distribution function allows us to describe the random variable. So if a distribution function has no jumps, that's going to be what's called a continuous random variable. And it asymptotes up to 1, uh, goes asymptotes to negative infinity at here at 0, and it's just a smooth continuous function here. That's a continuous random variable. That's the type of random variable um, that would have this kind of distribution. So a discrete random variable looks like this. It looks like a step function uh, with our distribution function here. And it only takes on probability at the jump points. Is that these jump points would be the support of the degree uh, of the discrete random variable. Now you might be thinking, well, there, this is only two cases, and I can envision a case that is somewhere between discrete and continuous. And yes, that's true. You could have increasing regions at, at some point between jump points. Now that type of random variable is what's called a mixed random variable, um, and it's sort of a combination between these two. But usually what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk about continuous random variables, we'll talk about discrete random variables, when it's important to make that distinction, and then mixed random variables, those will we'll kind of break them up into their continuous and discrete uh, components. There are other ways to think about the distribution of a random variable. This is what we would call the CDF, cumulative distribution function. I've just been calling it the distribution function, that's pretty standard terminology. Uh, the other thing that people like to think about is they like to think about a, a random variable's density. That it's the rate of change in the CDF. It's the rate of change in this probability here. So if we were to think about it in terms of a rate of change, that's going to suggest we take the derivative of this function here. See? We'll use a lowercase f to denote the derivative of the CDF. And as long as that's differentiable, we can get what's called the density. Typically, uh, express a lot of what we talk about uh, in econometrics. A lot of the distributions will think about their densities uh, rather than their distribution functions. Uh, now, with the discrete random variable, uh, we can do something that's sort of like a rate of change. So, if you're to look at the uh, counterpart of the density, this is called the mass function. The, this is going to be a function that is defined as a positive number on the support of this discrete random variable. Okay, so now we have a sense for what the densities look like and how we would get them from the distribution functions. These densities also have properties that they have to obey, otherwise uh, these probability functions wouldn't be defined uh, very well. Uh, first things first, because our distribution function is weakly increasing everywhere, it has to be the case that the rate of change is greater than or equal to zero. And then the next really important uh, property of, of densities is that if you add them up, if you add up all of the values that x could take on, it has to be that that adds up to one. We're adding up all of the probability that, that this random variable could take on any value. That probability is going to be 1. And when we integrate over the entire real line, this density function, it's got to be that that integral equals 1. And so these are the two properties that, that are uh, 
that our densities or mass functions have to have to obey. But this is really sort of the theoretical underpinning of what we need to understand here. Uh, so let's let's consider a really standard case. Okay, so this is very standard notation. We say that x is distributed normal zero one, um, and what that means is that x is a very particular continuous random variable. It's a continuous random variable with this distribution, uh, this density. Th this is the density of what we would call the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution. That is a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a variance of one. And it turns out that if you integrate this from negative infinity to infinity, that's going to equal one. We could use the fundamental theorem of calculus to determine what the distribution function is here. That is, we could integrate all the way up to some value x of uh, this density here. Now, that integral is hard to compute numerically, doesn't have a closed form solution, but they have tables to this. And you could, what you do is you integrate this, you can do this with any continuous random variable, you can integrate up to some value here. Um, and that's going to tell you, because the PDF is the derivative of the CDF, we took the derivative of this by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that'll just give us the density, it's going to be f of x. And so that's going to give us uh, the right relationship between the CDF and the PDF. So this is going to be what we would call a discrete uh, random variable's probability mass function. This discrete random variable is a geometric random variable. It has a parameter here called p. So the way to conceptualize this is the number of failures before you get your first success. Um, so when you can think about um, and think about a, a geometric random variable with a parameter p. Let's take an example where p equals one half. If I flip a coin, I, I can have zero failures before I get my first success. If I flip my coin and I get ahead on the first try, that means that I had zero failures before I had my first success. So if we had a really, really unlucky series of events, I mean, it, it could be unbounded in the number of times that I can flip the coin and not get heads. Um, I mean, sort of, we know with, uh, with a great degree of certainty that eventually it's going to happen. But we know that if I pick any number, maybe in the string of someone flipping a coin, they'll flip a coin enough times so that it goes greater than that number of times of getting tails every time in a row. The support of this distribution would be, well, the number of failures I can have. I can have zero, I can have one, I can have two. Yeah, keep flipping, I can flip three tails in a row and have three failures in that case, so I can have three, and so on and so forth, all the way up uh, for any integer. Uh, these are the only values for which, uh, uh, for which this mass function has a positive number, takes on a positive value. Every other value takes, takes on a value of zero. And so when we write down the mass function this way, uh, we know, and we're talking about geometric random variable we know to just add over the points in the support. So that gives you a sense for what distributions are, um, how we can get from distributions to densities, and how to think about continuous distributions and discrete distributions, how they're different when we start thinking about densities versus mass functions.